Peace, peace, peace. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me yet again. Uh, We're going to cut right to the chase on this one. Uh, this video is what I learned from debating with flat earthers. Now, I've been having this video on my mind for a while, especially this week. But today was the day uh, because last night I had the opportunity to actually have this discussion slash debate with someone that I actually grew up listening to. Um, someone who's part of a group whose music that I actually like. And I've actually been playing their music um, all month since the New Year's came in. Something was just like, yo, play this group. The group is called Brand Nubian. And the individual that I had the pleasure slash displeasure of um, dialoguing with last night was Lord Jamar, right? Someone who I was always, you know, rooting for because of his stance on different things, especially when it comes to black people in the jab. So just out the gate, I was like, all right, this is, this is good. I rock with him on a lot of stuff. Now, coincidentally, as soon as I come in, this is on Clubhouse, mind you, and I'm going to get into the whole thing, everything I learned about dealing with flat earthers, right? Um, but before I get to the Lord Jamal example, the number one thing I learned from debating flat earthers is that they do not like standards or methodology, right? And what I mean by that is when you're having discussions, especially about deep subjects, so anytime you're arguing, right, it's good to set um, a standard, okay? This way, people don't talk in circles. This way, everybody has the same um, metric of which to keep the conversation uh, objective, less emotional, and fair. Flat earthers do not like that. They do not like standards. They do not like to even come up with a mutual standard that you can um, implement in order to have this kind of discussion. All they want to do is ask a thousand questions, most of these questions that don't mean anything, um, just so they can be right. And then when you answer these questions, they keep dismissing it, right? And what do I mean by that? So number one, flat earthers do not like standards. They do not like methodology. They do not want to come up with something in which you can have this conversation and both parties equally can go back to that standard and see um, whether or not the earth is round or flat. Now, mind you, I think this entire subject is a psyop. I think it's uh, resurging mostly to distract people from what's really needed to be talked about. And I think that this flat earth subject is something that's pretty much something that's dominated by millennials and religious people. That's right, millennials, people from born between 1981 and 1997. Um, these, this is the one of the main reasons why this whole flat earth thing is back as relevant, which has came relevant in like the last 10 years, because that's also the rise of millennials and then by default Gen Z and religious people. Which brings me to number two, flat earthers, they act religious, right? And what I mean by that is um, just like a person that loves Jesus or loves Allah or loves, you know, um, Yahweh, right? Um, people have a certain devotion to these religions and when they like when you see someone really committed to a religion they get to a point to where there's nothing you can say to them it's only about that religion period and if you're not on that religion board then they get irate or they kind of talk to you in a dismissive disrespectful way this is the same thing flat earthers do they're quick to get emotional they're quick to get upset disguise it as passion Right. It's not passion. It's, it's emotions. And when you talk to these individuals, especially when you answer their questions or God forbid you don't answer their questions, they start to get real hostile. Right. So these are signs of people that are highly religious. So that's the second thing that I realized about debating with flat earthers is that it's similar to um, it's like talking to cult members, because when you talk to them, they don't address what you're saying. They'll go back to the same talking points. Well, what about the NASA and CGI? What about the spinning ball? What about, it's the same thing. And it's like, if you go through each flat earther, they'll say talking points, but they don't stick to the discussion. They don't address what you're saying. Um, so that's the second thing that I learned 
from debating flat earthers, right? We're going to get to this Lord Jamal incident um, after I go over these points. The third thing I realized from debating flat earthers is that they do not like sources. I could almost promise you if you talk to a flat earther, they're, it's like kryptonite to them. They don't give no references. They don't give no sources. They don't give nothing. All they do is give you stupid questions. And then when you ask them, well, how does this question, what standard are you using for me to answer this question to show how this would show what the shape of the earth is, they get hostile. They can't answer that. And the only source that they will give is from Eric Dubé. That's it. Right? They won't give any sources whatsoever. Um, and, and that's it's crazy because when you're talking about something like this, which could get complicated, um, you have to have something to pull from, which brings me to number four. The fourth thing that I realized from, and this all gets into the mindset of people, right? The fourth thing that I realized about flat earthers is that they have what's called a common sense approach, right? This stupidness where if they can't see it, sense it, then it must not be real or must not be true or must be a lie, right? Um, so therefore, if they're like, well, look what you're standing on. Look what you're, look at everything around you is flat. Therefore, the entire planet must be flat. As if flat things can't exist in spherical, um, in spherical creations, right? So that's that. They have a common sense approach. So they'll start giving you a whole bunch of silly questions based upon what they can observe. Even though you can't observe nothing inside your body. You can't see your heart. You can't see your organs. You can't see none of that that makes you, you. So this is the flaw of that. Being that I can't see Egypt. So because I'm not in a physical location, and, and you got to watch people that have this kind of common sense approach, right? Because they these are your super tangible types. It's like they have an inability to grasp things that are um, abstract. They have an inability to kind of go with things that they can't see, even though everything in this world that powers the physical is invisible, period. You can't see the air that you breathe. Um, so all of these things, and then these same people, these same people will mention God and mention all of this invisible stuff, but then tell you, I can't believe that the earth is a sphere because I can't see it. What I can see is a plane. If you live in an apartment with different levels, different stories, you're not going to see the story above you or below you. So does that mean because you can't see it, it doesn't exist? It's crazy, right? But this is the craziness that you deal with when you debate with flat earthers. So this is just an example of different mind states that you encounter when you have arguments and debates, right? And that's why you should never argue opinions because opinions are subjective. And when you're dealing with flat earthers, their whole approach is a subjective approach. You can't argue subjectivity because it depends upon your worldview. That's why they run away from standards and methods because it takes it out of you being biased and it puts it on a level playing ground. And this level playing field allows both parties that don't agree to come back to what they agreed would be the standard and then base that um, argument or discussion based on that standard. It eliminates people from getting emotional. Flat earthers don't like that. Why? Because, and I'm going to get to the motivation for this, because they feel um, it's something that I can control. This is why they stick to this common sense approach, because it all comes down to control. Most of your flat earthers, right? The reason why they cling to this, they'll tell you is because, oh, I studied it and it made sense. No, the underlying motivation is control, right? Somewhere, somewhere in their life, because they've been lied to. And I get it. You know, this government lies like crazy because they've been lied to so much. And so many things have been shown to be um, an illusion and not true. Flat Earth allows people to come with something where they can say it, believe in it, and every single point that you give against it because of the way Flat Earthers operate and the way that the whole 
ideology is structured, it allows for every opposition to it to be struck down. Period. You can't mention gravity. You can't mention space. You can't mention stars. You can't mention nothing. So when you have a belief system that allows you so much flexibility where you could strike down every single opposition, that's a that's a level of power and freedom that you don't have with any other belief system. Right? Because even with religion, um, you can't do that because it, it still comes down to you look crazy if somebody's showing you the flaws in a the religion, then you automatically go to a level of belief. What makes Flat Earth different is unlike religion, they are religious, but unlike religion, um, there's no there's no book, right? There's no standard, there's no anchor. So this allows the belief to be free flowing and be fluid and be so um, so untouchable that it allows the person that believes in it to strike down anything at any time. So that's why if you're dealing with a flat earther, make them stick to a standard. If they're giving you an arbitrary measurement, where did they get that measurement from? Because they're, they're, they're allergic to sources. They're not going to give you sources at all. In fact, where is it at? Part in the backside, y'all. Here, if you want to know the definitive talking points of a flat earther, this is the book to get. Right? Right here. It's called Zetetic Astronomy, Earth Not a Globe. This book right here is pretty much, there's no flat earther that's going to tell you anything of substance that's not in this book. This Zetetic Society is basically where all of this flat earth stuff um, comes from, right? Because the resurgence came back in the 1800s. This been out for ages, right? This, this belief. But it, it made its resurgence in the 1800s, and then it came back around um, right after the 2010s with the rise of millennials, right? So that's what you have to understand. So if you want to know all of the flat earth talking points, this is the book to get right here, right? And then when you see the history of the founder, right? And you see um, why this was started, and then you see the experiment that came from one of the followers of the creator of this society, you will see that, um, you will see the flaws in it. Now, this is a good book. It's, it's very difficult to read. I suggest you read it in a group. But this is, this is from A to Z, this is the to uh, flat earth talking points, right? Now, this is the opposite book. This book is called Cellular Cosmogony. Earth is not... Earth is a concave sphere with proof. So this is how you be objective, right? You read opposing views, okay? Flat Earther won't do that. They're just not, they're not even going to read this. And this backs their points, right? What they're going to do is they kind of keep questioning you to death. So when you're dealing with these type of people, um, you have to make sure that you don't fall into the trap of being questioned a thousand times. Because once you do that, you're going to be misdirected. And the minute you can't answer one of these stupid questions, which they haven't even shown, is a qualified question. Because just because you ask a question about a, something within the topic doesn't mean that it's a qualified question. So if you fall into the trap of answering this question, um, you're going to look crazy. So you got to stick to your guns on this. Um, so that leads me to this whole Lord Jamor situation. So... Um, I'm speaking directly. It's a room full of like 400 people on Clubhouse. And I'm speaking to Lord Jamar, and it's about Flat Earth. Whole time I'm cut off. It's like four or five to one against me on this subject. And the first thing I said was, well, before we start, let's come up with a standard. Cut off. Oh, that's the problem. That's the tap dance. You come in, you want standards, and that's the technology automatically it shows me that he's religious. Now, the only reason why I didn't put his name in the title is because I think that's kind of whack unless someone personally assaults you. That's what millennials do. But I'm addressing it here just to give an example that um, nobody's immune. 
whether it's status or what their position is. Nobody's immune from ego. Nobody's immune from ignorance, right? So the whole time I'm talking to him and the other people that have this flat earth belief, um, they're not looking at no sources. They're not looking at no nothing. All they do is question you about the wind, about the spinning ball, about gravity, all of that. They ask questions, and then when you ask them where they get it from, they can't tell you why these questions are relevant. So this overall video was to show what I learned, but also to kind of give a blueprint for how you argue and debate. And when you have an argument, debate, or discussion with people, be careful about logical fallacies, right? And don't be misdirected from the topic and don't feel pressured. Um, this is important if you're going to argue and debate, even if it's about nonsense like sports, which I don't recommend you do because people are not objective with that. But don't argue opinions, first of all. Don't get into any argument or discussion unless you're going to set a standard. Because if you don't set a standard, if you don't set a methodology, you're going to go in circles and you're not going to resolve the topic at hand. The purpose of arguing and, dis and, and debating and, and having a discussion is to get to a resolution of truth. It's not to just fiddle around. If that's not your objective, don't even waste time. You know what I'm saying? So set a standard. What is the standard before we start? What are we agreeing? Are we going to base this on to measure this conversation? Okay. Three, um, if you're dealing with people that don't want to give sources, it's a waste of time because then where are you getting this from? It's just an opinion. And you asking me a question based on your opinion, you're going to be right no matter what, because we don't have nothing to support it. Right. True scholars, um, true scientists, they back what they say. They don't just say, oh, I see it. Okay. You see it. What does that mean? A lot of stuff you see could be an illusion. Even the whole flat earth belief that we live on a plane and we standing on something flat, even that's an illusion because what's flat all depends upon the atom spinning at a certain rate to make what we appear as something solid um, and flat that we could stand on as if it is solid, but really it's not. It's just atoms spinning, which they'll say, how do you know it's atoms, right? So when you're dealing with this kind of bottomless questioning, um, you either got to disengage or you got to stand your ground and put the onus on them, right? And if you can, turn the table and ask them questions. Ask them questions. If they're telling you that the ancients believed in the flat earth, ask them for an actual source, right? Because um, most of them, they're going to mention Egypt, and they're going to say Newt and Gab, and then they're going to say, oh, Newt's lying flat. That doesn't mean flat earth, right? Because the ancient Egyptians depicted a lot of things representing heaven and hell and the underworld, and they use animals, and they use all type of symbolism that you can't take literal. You have to look at it as a metaphor or allegory or as a creation story or as an afterlife story or as a destruction story. So if you take it literal, um, you're going to miss the meaning. So when they use that example, it's a whack example. And when you ask them to show you something in the um, hieroglyphics or the papyrus where they said it was flat, they dance around that because they can't do it. There is no civilization, really, that said... Um, this is flat. They all say cosmic egg, womb, or shell. So that's important. So I just wanted to make this video um, just to just to put down what I learned from debating with flat earthers. So if you're going to engage with these psychos, um, because they're, they're, the, the, the arrogance comes from the fact that they feel like they are avengers of truth, but in reality, they're acting like cult members. Because if you're going to talk about science, but then you're scared to back up what you say with sources and your stance is, oh, it's just what I see, that's a cop out. You know what I'm saying? Because truth is always punctuated by observation and it's also punctuated by examples and evidence. And in the times, not just this times, period, when you talk about debating and all that and discussions, people use sources. There is a process. So I just wanted to say that. My interaction with Lord Jamal um, was was wild. You know what I'm saying? I still like the music, but the dude is a cult member, respectfully. Um, you know, and I say all this to him and all that. But, yeah, so that's that. This was, you know, long enough. Just wanted to document that. 
finally got this out the way. Thank you for your attention. And if remember, if you're dealing with flat earthers, you got to do it properly or don't do it because they're cult members. Peace.